back in the shade section today, I want to show you just a couple things going on down here. Fine fescue down here is looking good. We're getting to about the midsummer now, or close to it. So this is about the time when it's the toughest for this grass specifically. Even though it does get a lot of shade, it doesn't absolutely love heat. So it loses just a little bit of its color about this time, but as we get back into cooler temps, it just absolutely loves the spring and fall, like most cool season stuff. But a couple things to look at down here too. Looks like definitely seeing some traffic down here in terms of maybe some raccoons again, trying to dig up some stuff just like I had on some of my other plots. But I can definitely tell also with fine fescue when there's a lot of traffic on it because of how wispy it is. It will, uh, it will definitely show that. And right here, this is a mulberry tree. And lots of stuff pretty ripe right now. See all this fine fescue laid over here. Now I haven't been mowing this. It definitely gets wispy and tall like that anyway, but I think the deer have been coming in here to get a little snack from this tree. This over here was just a broadcast seed of tall fescue last fall. So considering those conditions, that's looking pretty good. There are some things I can do with overseeding. I see just a little bit of disease coming in here. See a few of these brown spots. Uh, considering that it stays a lot wetter down here whenever it does rain, I'm not really surprised by that. This is the dense shade testing right here. So line right in the middle where these trees are. That side is Kentucky bluegrass. This side here closest to the camera is perennial ryegrass. And I've probably been letting this get a little too tall and not mowing it as consistently as I should, but um, I'm just really looking to see if it thins out a lot over time, uh, what it looks like, but you can tell a difference here when you just come up onto this section. It's a lot thicker than the fescue right now, and I did put some actual cover on this compared to the fescue, which I just broadcast down and didn't really cover with anything. I mean, fairly thick yet for being in the dense shade. So that's just some stuff down here I'll be continuing to watch long term. I'll keep you updated on all that stuff too. So this stuff behind me right here is annual ryegrass and although annual is in the name i've been seeing a lot of this stuff that since i've been trying to scalp it down i've been letting it grow a little bit and then coming in and scalping it and it's been plenty hot but it's really not dying off at this point so i am going to spray it out just an interesting thing that i noticed um, that this annual rye has been really surviving pretty well so it's something that you have to think about it is a very good ground cover for what i'm using it for but it's going to have to get sprayed here soon so i can get into renovation mode very soon also wanted to show you right here i did get pre-emergent put down this year but only one app early on in the season and i did not do a split app so I'm seeing a little bit of breakthrough in a few spots here and throughout this plot, just a little here and there. So I'll have to decide soon how aggressive this is gonna be. A lot of times, if it's just a few pieces here and there, I can pick it out by hand, but if it gets to be pretty widespread, then you wanna get this early with something like quinclorac before it starts to really take over. Plots overall are looking good. Actually, I don't want to say this for some of you who didn't see any rain recently, but we did get about four, 45 one hundredths again the other day, which has just been perfect timely rain for us this season. It's not been overabundant, so there's still definitely some dry areas going on, but I'm not complaining because we are getting at least something when I know a lot of people are not getting much at all. So this ryegrass plot right here, continues to be my absolute favorite. The fescue looks good for people who love fescue. I don't really love super tall grass. Bluegrass looks good. I always feel like bluegrass just needs something. It just needs more fertilizer. It's kind of finicky on water. A lot of people into, over time have thought that rye is really hard to take care of, but I don't know, maybe I'm just uh, in tune with it and that's what I prefer, so I just do better with it. I don't really know, but that plot right there, definitely my favorite. I wanted to talk about this larger rye plot real quick. 
on this larger rye plot, I don't know if you will remember from last season, I had a lot of trouble with seed heads on this thing. So I've done a few things differently this year. I tried to cut it a little lower, which I have. I've been staying right around two and a quarter on my zero turn there. And also I've been just much more consistent with the mowing. I don't let it get very tall. I just keep mowing it, even if it's taken off just a tiny amount. So I've been consistent with that. And I've also been more consistent with fertilizer than I was last year. So on some of the fringes, which I'll show you here, uh, where I haven't probably gotten as much fertilizer, I do see some more of those stocky plants that have turned brown after that sort of seed head stage. And so throughout here, there definitely are some that are left, but compared to last season, it is much, much improved, not only on this plot, but also on that rye plot that I just showed you. But maybe it's just a more mature thing. I'm really not sure. I don't know scientifically what has led to that for sure, but I'm just letting you know, this is what I'm seeing this season. This is how I've treated it differently than I was last year when I had a lot of problems with it just looking really brown throughout the summer, even though it had some nutrients on it, it had proper water. And uh, so much, much better this year. Very quick update here on the buffalo grass that I just seeded. I did get quite a bit of good germination on, I think it was only about day four or five, somewhere in there. And it's already starting to grow pretty well. I haven't actually had a chance to even put the starter fertilizer on that I was going to do, but I may just come in here and start spoon feeding over top of this with the, the rest of my program. It's gonna be hard to tell in this wide angle, but right out through that section, Lots of growth through there already. I'll be taking that seeding blanket off really soon. Just remember, if you use those things and you leave them in place, it can become a real pain later on. So once you get good germination, start to see that grass popping up through the straw, and you feel like everything is good and held in place, then just roll that thing up. You can either try to use it somewhere else or just get rid of it at that point. But those things otherwise become a real pain later on as that netting in there starts to semi break down and then sometimes it gets stuck in the ground and just not a good scenario so I recommend taking that out just pretty much roll that thing up as carefully as you can not to get any of the grass taken out of there but this thing's taken off really well so I'm excited to see how it grows in. Wildflowers out here beyond the turf plots just continue to mature this year and look better and better so this is really cool actually as a backdrop for all the plots out here. I'm really happy that this has started to take off a little more than last season. Obviously I was kind of thought that most of my wildflower seed had washed away, but it looks like it's just getting better and better out here. Well, here it is. The day has finally come. This is the new mower, and by new, I mean it is actually a 1998 Greens Master 1600. So my local dealer here has pretty much fixed up everything for me. Nearly everything has actually been replaced, except the reel was pretty good, and the motor on these lasts pretty much forever, from what I have heard from the dealer and about a lot of other people. So I went with this thing because it is 26 inches wide, and obviously I have a larger area to cover now. It's nice to be able to cover some larger areas in a quicker amount of time. Not that I don't love mowing because I do, but this should also allow me in the future to do some double cuts and some other patterns and things that would take me a lot longer with a 22 inch. Also, I wanted to just get used to a greens mower eventually here. I'm planning on having a golf green here at my house. And so it's a good time to get practice on this in a big open field and start to get used to it. I would say already that I'm fairly comfortable but I'm not absolutely a pro at doing all the turns and everything yet, but I'm getting pretty comfortable with it so far, and it's really nice to have an open area like this. I am keeping my other reel mowers that I do have. 
Uh, I'll have some other probably uses for them in the future, so it's good to have some backup systems too. And those I can put some cartridges in and do some specific things with, but I wanted to get one of these to get used to it, get a feel for what the greens mowers are like. It absolutely cuts great, there's no doubt about that. This is only about the third time that I've used it. I wanted to do a couple mills out here and get used to it first before doing any filming with it. But tonight felt like a good night, a nice evening here to get out in the front and mow this thing. So the 4th of July is coming up here for us here in the US, so I wanted to wish you a happy 4th and also let you know we do have a few special things going on as far as sales for the 4th of July, so please check those out if you would. And thank you so much for the support. Thank you for watching this video and we will see you next time.